we say it, mitako yase, uh, we are all related. A saying that it relates to so many things, because when you say we are all related, that extends from the tiwahe, unchimaka, uh, the earth. The tiwahe is the inner family, and the tiwashpe, um, the earth, and so on and so forth, out to the universe and um, the great mystery. Um, in that belief system, and I know quite a few people know what the hippie movement is with the spiral and the different things like that. And these are some of the symbols that are uh, representative throughout the world. And what we have to realize is that in the long term, we have to have a shared vision. We all come from the same place. We all need the same things. The basics, through Old Surrey, we we have a um, seven tenets that we follow, and in those tenets, there's food, fire, water, shelter, earth, spirit, and self. And out of all of those things, those are, are subheadings that we pursue uh, projects and programs throughout. What we're doing here on this particular site is we are pursuing water catchment, mini. What we're doing in that pursuit is how do we catch it, hold it, slow it, and sink it on this property, and how do we make it appear where we want it to. So all of this stuff around us, and then it all drops down at elevation. You have smaller branching at the top, larger branches feeding into the main stem, and this is how uh, the blood of the earth flows. What I do is called holistic sustainable community development, and when I share this information, uh, and we start getting into the practical things and observation and how you feel about things are very important. Uh, earlier we were digging holes over here and I showed a couple of the guys that when you get down about two foot then you start running into some very hard terrain below level ground and that's called a uh, uh, impenetrable layer. Those sub layers follow the contour. Now this is a rough rendering of what's going on up here. You got the large hill over here. Uh, you got this little rise here. And then we come down and you got a, another one right here. Now recently on, on this area, there was a flood and it flooded the uh, eco dome here. The rain has super saturated the soils and uh, we want to cause this in some, some fashion. And we want to duck this away from this eco dome so that it doesn't all flood it all the time. And we do that with a, a variety of methods. We use swales. Uh, and a swale is almost like an animal trail that's beat into the ground. And it helps us to move water from one place to another. It's a shallow ditch. We also use uh, key line plowing. We use uh, micro uh, earthworks with uh, sheep's foot and uh, dappling, we can use livestock. There's many methods uh, available to us to catch and hold this water. And uh, what we're attempting to do is we start up at elevation. So that's where we're gonna start this observation. We're gonna look at the terrain uh, from uh, the highest point on this place, which is actually right over here on the hill. And then we're going to start picking out how we're going to go and catch the water and point it to the places we want to do. And we're going to sink it on a place, and that water is going to help do whatever we humans want to do. And this water thing is intrinsic to everything and everybody. Without water, there is no life. We're coming to some vital, vital points on this planet where uh, the pursuit of capital is directly interfering with that water. Um, the pursuit of cheap energy is directly in, a, in a opposition to what we're trying to do here on this site. Capitalism, um, because it's not true capitalism. Capitalism is good. That's making a deal. You know, that's, that's a, a trust of faith. That's a handshake. Uh, I'm going to give you a bow, you'll give me a horse. Uh, I'm going to give you corn. Uh, 
you're going to build me a, a, a building or something like that. You know, that's all good. And it, it's a, a faith gesture. And it's very key. It doesn't matter what politicians say. It doesn't say what the bankers say. Nothing. Exchanges were created on a trust basis. It was a handshake deal. Somebody believes somebody, and then you want and accomplish things. We don't need great capital. We need people. And we need people that are on the same wavelength, that understand that if we continue this course, we kill this planet, we kill ourselves. We don't actually kill the planet. The planet gets sick, it shakes us off, we all die. Uh, pretty simple stuff. We can't all have everything. Uh, but we can live very well. Money has replaced that personal trust, that handshake deal. And what it's allowed it to do is the people that are on the upper crust, it allows them to accumulate uh, that trust of everybody else and put it in a bank. And it creates what, uh, a stagnant situation. If you dam something, water, and it goes stagnant, it becomes a dying place. When you uh, take that rich trust responsibility and you park it in a bank and, and few people can accumulate all of it and things are no longer done, then you have unemployment, you have people getting kicked out in the streets, you have people that are starving, you have so many things that are wrong. And it separates us. You think that because you have money that you can live above the earth and and it's because we've allowed this thing to stagnate and we've no longer uh, have this trust amongst people anymore and we have to network we have to reach out we have to realize that it's not just about you it's not just about Tiwahe uh, the Tioshbe Tioshbe is a greater family the extended family in a way it is because that's all people on earth but this goes into the greater universe. Um, we're a pretty tiny and young thing on this planet. We're some of the last peoples to accept this Western uh, financial system. And we have direct memories. We're three generations out from when Western inclusion came here. And we have memories, direct memories of a time when uh, we operated without money. We still understood trust. And um, we still understood that we were connected to all things. We believe amongst ourselves, um, the Lakota, that man is the caretaker. Uh, we don't have dominion. As a caretaker, it is our responsibility to take care of this, this stuff here. From the water, which is the lifeblood of this planet, to the animals that dwell on it. Um, we believe that, that Spiritually, we are directly connected to um, the animals, the rocks, the earth, uh, the water, all of these things. And when we use something, we thank that spirit so that they can be good with things. Bill Mollison, the author of uh, Permaculture, uh, says there's two things that are revolutionary. Get to know your neighbor and plant a garden. Uh, on my personal place, I'm doing it currently with four pastures. And it's a 10,000 acre place and we solely graze on one place and then we switch over and we use another and we use the water to draw them. So it's low impact, low labor. Now I'm not saying that permaculture is easy. In fact, it's labor intense because you come in and you do heavy work to begin with. It's actually harder than traditional agriculture because you're doing things in a renewable fashion, and dirt work is intense, as this gentleman can tell you. If you look at this, you have clover, uh, western wheatgrass, and if you look down further, you can also see buffalo grasses. Overstory, midstory, understory. If you look at this canopy over here, you have your overstory, the shade trees, and then if you look, you have buck brush, and then you have uh, foxtail grasses and other things like that. That's a fairly balanced ecosystem. This was uh, Buffalo Plains uh, area 
and there was some really major animals that balanced this ecosystem. There was the prairie dog and there was the bison. And when the bison moved, they moved in millions ahead. And they moved across the plains and where they went, it looked like a plowed area. And they ate everything. They ate everything. But they didn't come back for 16, 18, 24 months. And when they came back, it was chest high, it was boot top high on a horse. And it was not short grass prairies. And with our current uh, methods of range management, we are not allowing that to be fully replenished. We have cut off the Earth's uh, natural respiratory and uh, circulatory systems with modern ag. We've gone in, we're doing nitrogen injections into, into the soils to put nutrients into the soil. That nitrogen displaces oxygen, and it's killing our gophers, it's killing our mice, it's killing our grubs, it's killing our worms. And we no longer have a balanced system, and we have to continually put in more inputs. And there's ways and methods in permaculture to deal with that, from biochar and compost teas, worm plugs. There's many different methods to go and bring the ecosystem back into balance. And those prairie dogs are, are key uh, pieces. And so is simulating the buffalo, because you have to have that flow. If, if things stagnate, they die. Holistic management and permaculture is trying to observe everything and balance it. You're trying to do your his historical area research because we're human, we're fallible, we can make mistakes. We can build uh, biodomes 20 feet too low <laughs> and then they flood. Uh, we can make many, many mistakes as we move along as long as we come back and we fix it. A plant is not just sitting there sucking up water from the soil. Uh, it, it actually works in reverse. That plant is out there gathering water and the water hits the stems and then it penetrates down the stem and then down the roots. And the deeper the root system is, is the deeper the water penetrates. When you have a, a monocrop system, corn, um, you have a root system that's about so deep and everything else underneath that seals up and it's called plow pan. When you have an event, weather event happen where it drops rain, it only soaks in so far. Then after that, that small layer of soil is super saturated and then it turns into um, erosion because it doesn't have further to penetrate. And you don't have the gophers, the moles, the worms, and all of those things helping to create channels, micro channels, to deposit more water and absorb more more. If that water is in the soil and things grow, in a drought, you don't have water so everything dies. With climate change, it's not that we don't get weather, it's that we get larger, short-term bursts. You get uh, five inches of rain in 15 minutes. You get four feet of snow in four hours. Um, you get 50, 60 mile an hour winds, snow, sleet, all of those things. If we have this long-term plan amongst us that we all agree that we want clean water, we want clean food, we want a clean environment, we want all this stuff, it's obvious. 300 years down the road, that was a wrong choice. 300 years from now, doesn't involve me, doesn't involve you. It involves your kids, your grandkids, everybody else. Technology exists absolutely to reverse what we have done. Permaculture is a way for us to organize, to do something larger than ourselves. And the thing that we are lacking at this point is a shared vision. We don't stay isolated. We know our neighbors and we communicate. We share resourcing. We um, create networks beyond our immediate Teoshpai or Tiwahe, our immediate families, and we can do this.
we can spread this as far as we want. And we can hold our politicians to task as long as we know what we're looking at.